it's, it's going to take um, shedding off this, this old Christian thing. Because whether or not, because I even had to come to um, some type of understanding with this, is that a lot of times when I'm looking at the scriptures, I'm like, wow, you know what, I, I didn't really look at it like that. And so sometimes I even have to ask myself, am I still looking at certain things from a Christian perspective? You know, so um, again, to completely detoxify yourselves, you have to let every single thing go. And I know it's scary. Because we've been here and doing this thing for so long, we're, we're comfortable. But I I'm telling you, um, it, it will be a life-changing um, experience if we ever got a chance to um, go back home. Because like Moray said, is that, you know what, whether we, do, we know it or not, we do know that this is not home. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. We've gotten comfortable here. Here is not home. We have to go back. Not everybody wants to go back. And once we get there, there's going to be people crying, wanting to go back into Egypt the same way that it was from the very beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We, we're comfortable. Yeah. Any other questions regarding today's lesson? <laughs> Face lock is right around the corner. Yes, sir. I just have a question when it comes to <clears throat> like what you're like what you're saying, like it's like more like you you know we're not sometimes we may come off as not serious or or you know I know this is supposed to be a rehearsal, but sometimes I get confused when it's when it's about like well this is a rehearsal so we're practicing, but then we're supposed to be strict. This is serious. I'm not playing any games. This is these are the four steps. You know, like it's like which one is it? Is it are we rehearsing or are we being serious? Like. It doesn't, they seem like two different things to me. Like mm -hmm. when, you, when you say, I'm not playing no games, this is what I mean, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm doing to get into the land, this is what my belief, you know. But then it's like, well, this is a rehearsal period. Oh, I, well, I got to work today. Well, like, well, my job won't let me off. Like, I've heard brothers and sisters say, well, I quit that job because right. I, they wouldn't let me off. Or I've heard, you know, examples of other you know, brothers and sisters saying, you know, like it's just if I can't if I can't do this, then I'm not going to work or I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna let the father take over. But then I've heard, well this is a rehearsal period. You can go ahead and do that. You can go ahead because this is the father, you know, I that you know see I don't know if I'm making sense, but yeah, I, I, feel like, I feel like I get that I get that a lot of times when especially when the feasts come around because there's stuff that I have not done because I was trying to do it the best way I could. And then I'll hear examples of other people, and I'm knowing that's, I guess, most necessary to compare myself to other people, but I'll just hear examples of like other stuff that people are doing. I'm like, which one is it? I, I, I don't know. Like Maybe it's just I just have to do what's right for myself, I guess. But it just seems like a lot of times I get a lot of this and that, if that makes sense. Okay, if I'm understanding, okay, uh, the whole thing about the festivals, uh, Everybody's job, for example, everybody's job, I guess the rules and regulations are, are different. Mm -hmm. And what um, myself, uh, we have uh, Executive Moray and Lamont and I, we're trying to put the calendars together a lot faster. Meaning now is that we want to give everybody the, um, the opportunity to let their jobs know that, let's you know, we need these days off. Um, Koji Shai, I mean, she was on me, she was like, listen, you know what? We need the date for Shavuot, we need the date for Shavuot. So uh, we had the date for Shavuot, I gave that to her about three weeks ago. If you're not able to do um, a lot of things, we have to remember also at the same time in Deuteronomy 28 chapter talks about, because of our disobedience, um, we're gonna serve our oppressors for the one of all things, food, shelter, and clothing. We're gonna do those things. Um, if a brother or sister, for example, is not able to make it to, uh, to Passover, I would never tell that brother or sister that, you know, listen, you're going to hell. I would never, ever do that. Never. Um, being that we're in captivity, and maybe Moray, um, he can explain it or shed some more light on it. Is there any time where you can set some time apart 
Because the Father knows that you put your best foot forward to make sure that you can have that day off, and because of the circumstances, you were not able to make that day off. Could you now do something at home, for example, with you know, Yulia Isha and your, your box, your daughter? Because what I think was happening a lot of times is that I don't want anybody to think that I'm saying that, you know what, if you don't do this and that, that, that you're going to help. Meaning now that when we were in captivity, especially I like to use um, Daniel as an example, what he would do now, he would offer up his praise now, in sincerity now, to the Father the three times a day. This is what he was doing. And that was counted for him for righteousness. That was considered a sweet, burning Savior. You can go even to the book of Tobit, where we see now that even at that time, there was a festival, I think it was Shavuot, was being held outside of Jerusalem. The festivals that the Qumran community were doing because they did not want to go up there to Jerusalem, they were not holding it in Jerusalem. They was doing this now in their set-apart community. And so I, I hope I answered your question. I mean, what I'm saying now is this. The Father, yes, he knows your heart. But the Father also knows when you're playing games. Mm -hmm. If you can make it, make it, I would suggest that you make it. Right. If you if you're sincerely, I mean sincerely can't make it, nobody can hold that against you. The Father is so lenient where there were, um, for example, and I only see this now with one festival, mm -hmm. because this festival is so so important, which is Pesach. If you were not able to make Pesach because you might have been in a faraway country, you came across a dead body, he gave you the opportunity now to do it next month. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, just for example, I, I, you know, we haven't talked anything like that. If you were not able to make it to um, Pesach next week, mm -hmm. then you can do it now according to scripture the following month. You can do that. Uh, yeah, okay, I get it. That definitely helps. Um, I guess like it also, like, when it comes to us, like, you know, like how sometimes, like in the past year, we gathered on parts of the feast day, but we couldn't gather because of just of schedules and stuff. So, right. what do you, I guess let me think about how, I'm, just like, when you're asked, like, is it based off, like you said, what, just based off your own heart on that, like what you would do, like if we're, if we did a phone call instead of a convocation together, but we, you know, it was like on the first day of unleavened bread and the right. last day of unleavened bread. You're supposed to also. Right, exactly. Right, so, but we're not doing anything scheduled with the Mishra here, but you just do what you can do, right? Like you're not supposed to be working that day either, those days either. Right, exactly. And a very good point. What we can do, all right, Maury and I, you know, we, we have to get together more and, and handle and tackle such questions as that, where we can. Get together on the last day. If we're not able to come in together, we can do a conference call. We have to do something. Mm -hmm. Something is better than nothing. Is what I'm trying to, you know, what we're trying to get at. Because, like you said, because I did say, according to scriptures, is that this walk is serious. The festivals of Yahuwah, especially the Shabbats, now we can we cannot look at those days as just ordinary or common days. We just can't do it. We have to make sure that these days are set apart. Set apart means set apart. And I'm just going to read it just again. I'm not going to be long with it, with it, but remember what I'm saying here. I said now, Yasharal is supposed to be one Knesset. We are supposed to be called out ones. As true Israelite believers, we're supposed to be dedicated, sanctified, consecrated, walk as a priestly people, set apart, always offering up spiritual gifts. And some of the spiritual gifts that we offer up now are our praises. You may yeah. mention a prayer, which is tefillah. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Oh, okay, so you can cut it off whenever we're done, okay, to say by the way, so we, you know, this is just us just freestyling. But, um, Just make sure that, that, that we're serious with it because we don't want to be in a situation where we get lazy because we have a tendency to get lazy. Where, according to scripture, 
if the Father don't keep a fire underneath our behinds, we, we're not going to move. We're definitely not going to move, but we'll sit here and just wait for Jesus to come and, and get us up out of here. This is what we're going to do if the Father don't keep a light under you. We're a bunch of lazy people. Yes? I know that when sometimes when I have to work on the feast days or Shabbats, um, and I don't recommend anybody quitting their job because if you quit your job, who's going to take care of you? And mm -hmm. a lot of people go, well, the Father will take care of me. Yeah, he, he did take care of you. He gave you a job. He, he gave you a means for um, to, you know, take care of your family. But when those times would happen, I would just go because being a nurse, working in a hospital, I would carve out a piece of time where I'm not disturbed by anybody and go somewhere and pray. And then I would have my connection that way. And then I would go home. Once I get off work, I would go home and, you know, pray again. I would try to find some way where I can make that connection on that particular day. So the Father knew that I was serious about the day and that he understands that I am still in captivity and I still need to, I, I'm still captive by the laws of this society mm -hmm. where I have to have to go to work or I'll lose my job. And if I lose my job, I can't go to any brother or sister in here and say, can you pay my $1,800 mortgage? Because who has that extra money laying around? So I, it's all about responsibility and, um, you know, doing your own little thing just to show connection to the Father. Uh, absolutely. Because look at um, one more quick example. Let's say I went to Pesach and I had all of this leaven in me, but you're at home and you're fasting and you're praying. Whose um, prayers would the Father accept? The one at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we, we do understand. Yes, sir. So uh, well, a couple things. One is what do you guys, I mean, what are you considering leaven? Mm -hmm. Is that a uh, 
Because see, a lot of times in the, in the, uh, the Bible will tell us this must be done at this particular 